so when you install CorelDRAW, it comes with a, a slew of smaller programs. What we're mainly going to look at today is just the, uh, the CorelDRAW actual uh, Corel. Uh, the photo paint, if you take pictures in the field, you want to process them, no problem. Just open them up and you can play. But we're to, today we're just mainly going to focus on the drawing part. Uh, so this is the uh, latest version, X8. Uh, I'm just going to wait for it to boot. All right, uh, I'm just going to turn on the screen brightness. There we go. So when you come in, you are welcome with a nice nothing to open a file or just a new document. Uh, just click the top little icon here. It's pretty intuitive. You can name it. Uh, you can give it a size. Um, you can also specify if you have something that needs to be more specific. You can specify the width. The height, um, especially yeah, especially for posters, you can also uh, specify specify if you want miles or centimeters, depending on the size, uh -huh. <laughs> depending on the size of your poster. So you, you can go up to kilometers on here. Okay. Um, there's some color settings you can play around with it. Usually, um, those are a bit more advanced. Um, but you can check up if, what each of one of them does on the internet. Yeah. So there's there's two color modes, uh, RGB, which stands for red, green, black, or CMYK, which stands for Cylon, Magenta. Uh, yeah, it's just a different uh, different palette of colors, uh, just by default. Well, Different publications like a different yeah. you can also you can always change it later. It's not not that big of a deal. It's just when you choose your say you want to print a figure and you choose a specific color and you have to be very very specific, then it's, I think it's better to use this one here. Um, resolution that's also very um, intuitive. And there you go. Sorry, I was just interrupting. Um, just in terms of resolution. Everyone here becomes guilty of the fact that their pictures are like two megabytes each. And then you put it in and then your thesis is like 50 megabytes. Your thesis has to be within 20 megabytes. So each figure you do, check the size. But otherwise you end up with the thesis and you can't click on your picture and ruin it. Yeah. So be careful about the size of your figures. Yes. Um, you'll see, um, once we just start drawing, the, the Unless you use a picture from your camera, then you have to downsize uh, your, your file. But if you're just drawing in CorelDRAW, the files really don't take that much space. Um, so the first things I want to show is uh, this, this very neat little tool. This, this sidebar here has all your tools that you need. You can obviously pick, uh, you can shape, you can crop, you can zoom. You can draw, you can have specific artistic tools, you can draw a nice rectangle, which is also a very nice feature in paint, from what I hear. <laughs> Got adjusted in paint. Yeah, you, you can write. But what I want you to notice is that they, they have a little um, icon here that you see, this little uh, black. If you click on it, uh, yeah, it's a left click and hold it more features will appear. So for example, here I have a free hand. I can draw with free hand, so just to show you. So if I click my mouse, I can zoom and do all these little things. So that's just me not letting go of the clicker button. So I can draw whatever I want, and here we go. Um, unfortunately, I'm just going to delete that, so it was just to show you. OK, function delete. Function backspace. Yeah, yeah no. Okay. Um, so that that is very very useful. Uh, the one I use the most is called the B spline, and I'm just going to show you exactly what what this does. Is if I click, then I can create a line, and if I click again, then I can just draw whichever sort of figure. So this is very, very useful if you have an image and you want to trace something. This is probably your best bet. And if you finish, just double click. 
Uh, in Corel Draw, you can also zoom in to be quite close. So that's very nice if you need to do some detailed work. But let's say I don't like I don't like this image. I want to shape it, but I don't want to start over again. So I will choose this shape tool here, and here we have all of our points that appear. So I can shape this however I want. I can also add other points by double clicking. And let's say I want this over here, I want this over here, and I can also delete these points. I've made a mistake. So again, we'll just function backspace for the Mac. So I can delete my points, it's not a big deal. Let's say I have a whole slew of them that I don't like. Highlight them, delete, okay? And let's see, let's say I have this point here. I want this one to be sharp. Well, here right on top, I have these two functions. I can either make it sharp, call it the clamp, or I can just make it float. So if I want to clamp that point, I've highlighted it and I clamp it. And there you go. Okay? I have a question. Yeah, you can stop me and, and ask questions. Yes, please. I'm just curious, you guys know what a uh, spleen is, this type of uh, contour. This is called a spleen. A spleen is when you fit, uh, it's, it's very similar to your plotting program, when you go to a linear fit and you want to do a regression, and let's say you want to fit uh, a polynomial instead to uh, a certain set of data points. That's technically called a, called a spleen because you have continuity in the function, you have continuity in the derivative of the function. So that's what this program is actually doing. It's drawing you a polynomial spleen. I'm not sure how it's represented internally, and it's fitting to that. And because of that, you see the cusp on the left hand side is not representable polynomially, at least to find out not a polynomial. So that function that she did before that fixes it and makes it sharp, that's done manually. No matter how you draw, you can never get a curve perfectly sharp. Yeah. <coughs> So you, you have other tools, uh, you can do lines, you can do a polylines, um, try it, it doesn't hurt. If you, if you don't like it, there's always the delete <coughs> key. Um, the other thing that's uh, important, the crop, but you can also uh, cut things. So let's say I want to cut this part here. So function delete, oh, I didn't, okay. Undo. You can uh, try to cut things. It doesn't always work that well, so I don't use it that much. You can also erase. Um, that's also a very nice feature from Paint. <laughs> it's not really favorite. your favorite. Uh, but let's say you have a box, and let's fill up this box with a color. Let's say you have an image. You have a very specific, let's say you're dealing with a map for, for some of you, and you want to mimic said color on the map. So you have, you have your shape that you want to fill, okay? What you can do is go over here, the little color eyedropper tool. So I want to pick exactly this color, okay? And then you can just, another click, fill up the other part that you're trying to draw it will be the exact same color. So if, for example, you're trying to draw a map and you have to keep the same gray or you have to keep the same red, this tool, this little uh, eyedropper tool will be very, very useful for you guys. Okay? If you don't like it, you can always undo. Okay? Um, another uh, interesting tool, I'm just going to select this one, is the transparency. Here I've, I've clicked on it. This is your transparency tool. And it will give you some options at the top right here that you see. You can make it uniform or we can make it uh, a fountain transparency. So if I click on the fountain, I will be given two lines, these two lines right here. Okay? And these are your controls. So if you play, if you click on this, on this uh, square here and you play with it, this will be your control for transparency. So I can arrange it practically any way I want. I can put it here, okay, so you can play around with it. It's a little bit happy-go-lucky. Uh, you may have to play with it a little bit to get it just the way you like it, but it's very uh, flexible, okay? Don't be afraid to, to click on it again. I don't like this. Okay, let's try playing with it. 
um, no problem at all. Okay. Uh, other than that, that pretty much. Oh, one more thing I want to show you. So let's say I have this box here. So this is something. Um, it takes a bit more patience, but I will show you very quickly. Let's say I have. I want to draw a shape. So again, I'm just using the B spline tool. There you go. I'm done my shape. Now let's say I want to put this thing, this rectangle here, but I want to fit it inside of here. Uh, this happens when you say, I don't know, I'm, I'm playing with a map, but I don't want to keep all the map. I just want to keep this, this part of the map. So I've, I've gone into the map, actually draw what I want to keep, and here's what, what it looks like, what I want to keep. So then I click on my, I uh, right click on my figure and a bunch of options will open. So the first one is a power clip inside. So that's the one you want to choose. So a power clip inside, oh, sorry, yeah. I will do the reverse, actually. It'll probably be easier. So power clip inside of this. And there you have it. All the rest has been blanked out, don't see it, and it's been put inside the circle, what I wanted to keep. Now it happens, sometimes we need to play around. So if you just click on it, at the bottom you'll see uh, select power clips component, and you can move around the figure, um, adjust it the way you like it. Um, let's say you have just one part of the map that you just need, but it didn't quite go center. So you can just adjust it, you can rotate it, um, you can do what, play with it with however you want. Um, so Corel Draw is, is actually very, very flexible. Um, don't be afraid to play with it. Um, if, if things don't go your way, there's always the undo button. <laughs> there's, there's so much tutorials online. Google is your best friend. And the last thing I actually want to show you is uh, how to save. So of course um, there's save as, but there's also these functions here, import and export. So I'm going to choose export for now. So what I mean by export is that if I export, I have access to all these different files that I can save. I can save it as a JPEG, which is the most common, but I can also save it as a uh, PDF, which is or down here, yes, Steve. Yeah. Um, I, I hope we're all familiar with uh, the Corel Draw is, is you know, by, def by default a vector drawing program. Yeah. Okay, so that means that the file you create can be sized to any arbitrary size, uh, however big or small, disregarding the resolution uh, of the screen and so on and so forth. Whereas Paint, for example, you're talking about the Raster program. So when you're drawing, you're drawing to the resolution of whatever underlying grid it is. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of a mesh command in the, in the, in the uh, MATLAB or something. So one of the biggest differences here is that when you export, you can choose if you want to preserve the vector format or you want to go to a raster format. So for publications or something like that, they usually prefer EPS for drawing. Mm -hmm. So that means you don't have any embedded images of JPEGs or PNGs or something like that that has raster format. So you're, you're of course, free to mix your formats. You can different types of things and concatenate them. You can easily put a JPEG inside of your drawing, that's not a problem. But what I'm saying is, uh, for a file which is almost pure drawing, you can reduce the file size a lot when you submit your journals or make, make your PhD and so on if you preserve the vector format, say put it into an EPS or PDF format. Okay, but for some cases, when for some reason or another you must have to have it rasterized to be able to do, you can choose a JPEG or PNG format. PNG usually being more of a space efficient compared to JPEG the same as so I'm just going to export this uh, as a PDF so we can view it uh, in the PDF viewer for now. Where is it? There it is. Uh, I'm just going to keep it untitled. And then you export, and it's going to come up with all your uh, features. So um, the, you can choose the, the compatibility. Sometimes some programs have some preferences, um, the colors. Here's where you can change it, RGB, 
or the other one that we've seen, or we can even export it in grayscale if you want. Um, the document. So we were saying the grayscale. Yeah. And he was doing this discussion group. He said that we always make sure you're pretty good with grayscale. Yeah. But there's sometimes the catch to put the color. That too, and if you ha also have somebody who's colorblind, mm -hmm. um, that usually helps. Uh, the document, uh, you can um, put keywords, um, display. Um. Now, if you do have a JPEG and you do need to compress it, this is the place to do it. Uh, so here we have the JPEG quality. You can either put it at as very low or very high, depending on the size of file that you want. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at high because we don't really have a photograph from your camera. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can also export the text as curves. Um, say um, the journal wants, wants, uh, doesn't want to play with the text, and, and you can choose that if you want. Uh, and it will also give you issues. So here we see page one contains objects that fall outside the page. This rectangle here falls outside the page. Now what it means is, is that when it will export this as a PDF, it will only export what's in the box, in your page. So if you have something that's in your page and it falls outside, it will be cut outside. Um, so that, please pay attention to that because, well, it's an easy fix anyway. You can either make this image bigger or smaller or you can adjust the size of your page right here, not a problem. So let's say we want, we want, we're happy with this image. We click OK. It's done. Voila. Now I have no idea where I exported it to. <laughs> Documents. All right. There we go. So here is my final PDF. So you, as you can see, the objects that fell outside the page. I will make this smaller so you can better see. Objects that fell outside the page have been cut. And only what has been preserved in the page has been kept. Uh, so, do you have any specific questions? Yes, Steve. I'm sure that uh, people are going to be interested. Let's say you have a PDF or EPS file from someone else to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. You want to open that up and draw it again and grow up, draw it. Yeah, of course. So, let's say I have this wonderful thing. You can either go new document, print a new page, and then Click and drag. Oops, there you go. So that's the easiest way. Now, if you import a PDF, it will ask you, um, do you want to import the text as a curve or as a text? Um, usually you want to play, to keep it as the text unless you want to delete a bunch of letters. And you can say yes, and there we go. There's my file. And then you can play around with it. Um, you can twist it, um, turn it, do whatever you want with it, uh, and then save it as your own. Yes? So, obviously now it's saving that PDF image. No, it's not a layer anymore. Um, Corel, Corel Draw, as comparison to Adobe, doesn't really work with layers. It's all in one. Um, if you want something um, that shows different sort of depth, you will want to play with the transparency tool. Um, but by default, it keeps everything into one layer. So that way you don't have to mess up with the, the Adobe that it does sometimes. I find it that it's kind of weird. This is actually useful for rag 2 you can see it, rag 2 you can see mm -hmm. um, Because often the labels on the axes can be quite small. You can see. You can always take a screenshot of your rag 2 you see Import it into here and change the layers of the text into the Yeah. So let's say text is, is very uh, straightforward. I have some text. I can always change um, what type of font, uh, the size. Um, sorry, I didn't highlight. The only quirky thing that I find uh, with Corel Draw is let's say I have this text. But for some reason, I want this, this second G here, the second G here, to be superscript, superscript, okay? So I have exponents. 
for say for some reason, then for so, for that I will want to choose the shape tool and highlight the little the little box that comes underneath the left of the G. So and then you'll see these two functions here will highlight and come they were gray before, now they're black, you can use them. So that's the only quirky thing, and then just click on it. Okay? Or so on and so forth. That's the only really quirky thing that I found um, that you just can't superscript or subscript. You have to choose the shape tool and then highlight which letter you want and then uh, put it subscript or superscript. Yeah, you can, uh, you can put it all capitals. Um, yeah. I'll make a capital or a small and you'll make a capital. So this this is the this second one here um, is uh, capitals but smaller. Um, so if you have a say a, some some abstracts sometimes they want your title all in capitals but they want like a smaller capital after the first letter. It's, it's kind of weird. Sometimes it happens, but you can more than be free to play with it. Um, the last thing I just thought of is that uh, Corel Draw comes with a grid. Uh, you can, if you're drawing a map, say, and you need things to be nice and straight, um, you can have a grid, and then you can just, with the arrow keys, say, align something uh, perfectly. But that's usually for uh, last stage um, kind of drawings for maps. Just make sure everything is straight. Any questions? Yes, Steve. I want to add that uh, <laughs> inevitably, if you work with Corel Draw, no matter which version for a while, uh, the stability is still an issue on these new versions. I'm not sure if it's related to the fact that uh, well, I'll talk about that off camera, but anyway. <laughs> off camera. <laughs> so when you have this save often, save frequently, yes. don't count any auto save function. And the other part of it is sometimes it may mysteriously freeze when you try to save it. Give it some time and might go through. Especially when you work with drawing files that actually has a big raster file embedded, like a big JPEG, or annotated or own figures or something, like pictures. Um, it could happen. Yeah. For, for instance, you remember when I did this figure? Um, for purposes, I was writing a paper, and uh, I had a bunch of olivine crystals that I needed to draw. So there was about uh, over 300 of them, let's say. And I, I had to put them inside the, the, the figure that I, I took. So it took a long time. So sometimes if, if your figure is very complicated, please be patient. Um, it can take a little bit of time. It would take about five minutes for me to go through. But that's because it was just all the little, little crystals. So the Yeah. So speaking um, of the last stages, uh, one thing you can do is, uh, I think it's, uh, let's see. Where is it? Line and distribute. What? What were you looking for? The. the line distribute? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Where yeah. is it? Just show people how to do mass produce. Sure. Yeah. And you can take a back up. It's right here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. The line distribute. So hang on. Okay. Uh, I just want to add something. So let's say you want to make replicas of this. Sure. And I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a whole bunch of these. So here's two, there's three, there's four. Alright. And there's a cool function built in that saves you a lot of time. Is you have to duplicate these things and then you wanna put them into a grid. You can go here and go object, and then go align distribute. And so I'm gonna first align these centers horizontally, and then I can go to here and I can go distribute function here and I'm going to distribute them according to the center of the box so now it looks something like this and then what I can do is I'm not happy with the spacing so I'm going to drag it over here and I'm going to align them again and distribute so you can you can make like a large grid of repetitive objects real quickly like that yeah it saves you a lot of time or if you have some text that needs to be perfectly aligned say for a poster uh, that will save you a lot of time. That's usually uh, late um, things that that's uh, last things to do.